I want to welcome Michael Antonovich, who is the chair of the board of directors of Metro. Um, Michael uh, has spent uh, his career working on behalf of foster children, open space, parks, trails, green technology, water conservation, clean air, improving the quality of life for the residents of LA County. Um, as a county supervisor, he has served the two million residents um, of LA County's fifth, um, fifth supervisorial district since 1980, so he's been around for quite a while. Um, he also serves as chairman of the board of the South Coast Air Quality Management District and MetroLink. So with that, we welcome you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Let me first ask, how many people are here from outside of California? How many are here from Los Angeles County? Okay. For those of you who are from out of state, Los Angeles County is not Los Angeles City. Los Angeles County was formed in 1850 <clears throat> when we became a state. Give you a little bit of history. A man by the name of Don Benito Wilson was here in the early 1800s. He acquired a lot of the property, a lot of the property. He married a, a Mexican lady. Uh, we were still part of Mexico. They had two children. One of the properties that he owned and sold to a family was Beverly Hills. He sold it to the Doheny families, and that's where they discovered oil after he sold the property. But he had the two children from his Mexican wife, and she died after the second child. And then he married an American lady, and they had two children. Well, the daughter from the Mexican wife, she ended up marrying the man and they own, which is now our Huntington Library. And I encourage you to go visit our Huntington Library. It's one of the best in the world. She lost that and we had the depression in the late 1800s in San Francisco because she had signed her assets to her husband's business, which failed and she ended up losing that property. The daughter who married from the American mother who married a gentleman who became a city attorney of Los Angeles City and then became the member of the incorporating committee of our city called San Marino and was the first mayor. But along the way, Don Benito Wilson started the first college here. It was a Methodist college called Wilson College. Have any of you heard of Wilson College? Have any of you heard of the University of Southern California? That's Wilson College. But the daughter whose husband became the first mayor of San Marino, they had a son. And what's interesting is that son became very well known, known throughout the world, throughout the world. His name was General George Patton. I was hosting the uh, Lo Suji from Jiangsu, China, a couple months ago at the Huntington Library. We had a special lunch for him. He was here with President, Vice President Xi, soon to be President Xi, uh, next month from China. And I was telling him the story of Don Benito Wilson and General George Patton. And, and I said, and have you heard of George Patton? And his response was, I saw the movie. So we are a very, very small world. But anyway, LA County has 88 cities. We have 10 million plus people. We have about a million, a million and a half people who live in unincorporated communities. Those aren't cities. The five supervisors who govern this, the 10 million people, were each elected to four-year terms. We are their mayor, their council. We control all their development and all of their issues. Of the 88 cities, about half of those cities contract with the county for their fire and their police. Our sheriff, he is the chief law enforcement officer for the entire county, especially when we have an earthquake or tsunami or whatever disaster would hit us. And then a, a good share of those cities also contract with us for their municipal services, the running elections and that. And that's just to give you a background on Los Angeles County. Los Angeles City was our first city that we incorporated in 1850. 
after we became incorporated. And uh, today, we have a very wonderful area with 88 dynamic cities. The, um, this summer, we had some interesting transit proposals that were developed. We opened an eight-mile Expo light rail line from downtown Los Angeles to Culver City. We extended the Orange Line bus transit through the San Fernando Valley with the Metrolink commuter rail and to Ventura County and also with an access to Amtrak. We initiated construction of the Gold Line foothill extension from Pasadena to Azusa, another one of our cities. We broke ground on a $112 million new regional intermodal transportation center at the Bob Hope Airport to provide a direct link from the airport to a new bus transit station and the existing Metrolink and Amtrak station that will open in 2014. We created bikeways to meet the needs of the growing population of bicyclists and pedestrians with over 144 miles of bike trails and over the next 20 years we are going to add 831 additional miles. While we have taken these transit baby steps we still have a very long ways to go. In regional transportation, I believe a plan must include all of our 88 cities. And <clears throat> while you'll hear about a measure that's on the ballot uh, this November, Measure J, uh, many of the local mayors and others are opposing that because it does not include a roadmap for all 88 cities. It basically favors one city, Los Angeles City, for their transit needs, which the rest of the 88 cities will help pay for, which is not really a fair. Uh, proposition. We need to have a regional transportation system that connects our entertainment and our retail s uh, venues, including Magic Mountain, the Burbank Media District, Old Town Pasadena, Downtown Glendale, and our educational institutions, Caltech, University of Southern California, U University of California, Los Angeles, California State University at Los Angeles, California State University at Dominguez Hills, California State University at, uh, uh, in, in the valleys, in CSUN, San Fernando Valley, the uh, Claremont Colleges, Azusa Pacific University, Biola University, and we have a large number of local community colleges that serve thousands of students. We also are the only municipal center in the United States that does not have rail connections to our airports. We do not have rail connections to our airports, and when I was with Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas, with our Secretary LaHood in Washington a couple months ago, he was pointing out how backward we are. And let me just say, how many of you used LAX International Airport? Okay, that is not controlled by this county of Los Angeles. That's the city of Los Angeles, so that third world rate uh, airport is not under our responsibility. <laughs> In July, I introduced and passed a motion at the MTA, which is to maximize the use of our transit providers and to coordinate the following system so that we can have our time schedules coordinated. Because we have, you don't may, maybe not realize, but of our 88 cities, eight have their own regional transportation bus systems. The cities of Santa Monica, Montebello, Long Beach, Torrance, Gardena, Santa Cruz, and Alt Valleys have their own bus system and the rest are served by the Metropolitan Transit Authority, the MTA. We also want to connect MTA schedule with our Metrolink and also with Amtrak. To achieve a system that is efficient and serves our population, we have to consider the future. How many of you heard of the X Express? How many have heard of the Desert Express? The Desert Express is now called the X Express. This is a very interesting private funded transit system that goes from Victorville, our neighboring county, to Las Vegas. They're going to travel that in approximately uh, uh, 90 minutes. We are working with X Express to have a line from Victorville into Palmdale. Palmdale would then serve as a hub, a regional hub. From Palmdale, connecting with our Metrolink, we could go from Palmdale to San Diego in two and a half hours. We could go to Palmdale to downtown Los Angeles to Union Station in 60 minutes. The extension of the California high-speed rail system into Palmdale would be from Bakersfield. You've all heard of the high-speed rail, correct? That's a statewide system that go from San Francisco to San Diego. Well, in their first stage in southern, Cal uh, southern half of the state, I should say, 
They've developed a station from somewhere to nowhere. It's, it really isn't going to serve a lot of people. But in the meantime, they have given Metrolink, and we serve Metrolink six counties, 10, uh, I should say $1 billion over 10 years. We're going to use those funds to upgrade our Metrolink, which serves approximately 900,000 passengers a month, so that we can have a seamless system from Palmdale to San Diego. We are going to use those funds for grade crossings, dual tracking, upgrading the safety. We already have the EIRs in place and beginning in 2013, and which is just a few, a few weeks. I mean, this year is already shot. We are going to begin those transit programs so that we are, if the high-speed rail system fails on its face, we still have this commitment to upgrade our regional transit system that will serve basically half of the state of California, which is a great investment. As I've told the director of the high-speed rail, they have a commitment. They have to develop this first phase on time and under budget. They cannot have the costly cost overruns. How many of you heard of Tudor Saliba, the contractors? They will bleed you to death. They will bleed you to death. We don't need that type of a contractor. We need an honest contractor who will be honest and straightforward. If they do that, they will have the public support to continue that expansion, and the next extension will be from Central Cali, uh, Central California, say Bakersfield, to Palmdale. And so you will have that connection. So you're looking at this regional system that is going to be coming into play that we're very encouraged over. Also, one proactive uh, development in the uh, new regional uh, center that just broke at Bob Hope Airport, uh, which is going to open in 2014, it's going to provide a link from the airport to a bus transit station and uh, that is going to be a very big, big plus. Another area that um, is important, 70% of our cargo from the ports, our two big ports, one by the city of Long Beach, the Long Beach port, and the one by the city of Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles port. Those two ports, 70% of that cargo from those ports go outside of Los Angeles County boundaries. One of the biggest problems with safety with our accidents, with pollution, our smog pollution, and congestion, are those trucks from San Pedro and Long Beach choking our freeways, trying to get outside of the county to, live, to deliver their cargo across this nation. So what we want to do, we want to have an inland port. We also want to upgrade. And what we've been able to do, and I should say 70% of the, the ports are the 70th the seventh busiest in the United States, the seven busiest. And one of my goals is to expedite the freight of inland distribution or uh, inland ports by rail to remove those trucks from our roads and reduce the environmental and traffic impacts and shorten the time to take your cargo from the port to its destination. So we have joined in a joint powers authority with the city, uh, with the county of San Bernardino to develop a high desert corridor. So the, the uh, supervisor for San Bernardino County and myself alternate the chairmanship each year to develop this proposal. We've already completed the EIR, which I should say will be completed in just a few uh, months in 2013, and this will be a public-private partnership. What we're looking to do is to improve the mobility of goods and to alleviate the congestion on our highways uh, we want to connect the Antelope Valley to the Victor Valley with long-range trips to Las Vegas and the rest of California. And the highway will also be a pivotal role in ensuring that Los Angeles County has an integrated regional transportation network that serves the entire country. The highways with uh, public transit, we need to improve our highways and integrate them with public transit. One example and locally is an MTA Silver Line, which is an express bus that travels on our HOV lanes between in East Los Angeles, of the city of El Monte, west of downtown LA, from the Artesia Transit Center to the south with several stops in, including downtown Los Angeles. That line was started 
two years ago, and now it carries 11,000 boardings a day on weekdays and taking cars off the 110 and the 10 freeways. We need to provide more rideshare options, including our MTA van pool program, which is very popular with long distance commuters. There are currently 1,200 vans rolling each day. Each van holds between five and 15 people. One good example how we can, what we have done, we have two great baseball teams in this region, Los Angeles Dodgers and the California Angels, or Los Angeles Angels at Anaheim. We were able, very effectively, but it took a lot of uh, hard work, I was able to initiate a grant from where I serve on the MTA from the Mobile Source Air Pollution Reduction Review Committee that funded an express so we had a bus from our Metrolink station at Union Station taking the people to Dodger Stadium. And what has happened since we initiated that just a few years ago, over 350,000 fans have used that connection, that shuttle. It's free, all you need to do is show your, your MTA, uh, I should say your Metrolink ticket and your, and your Dodger ticket and you go right to the stadium. We're also working in, in Anaheim that the California Angels, which are now the Los Angeles Angels. Actually, the Los Angeles Angels were the Los Angeles Angels. Then they became the California Angels. Then they became the Cal Los Angeles Angels at Anaheim. So we always said we we're going to have a World Series one day. The Los Angeles Angels, the Los Angeles Dodgers from Chinatown versus the Los Angeles Angels from Orange County. But that hasn't happened yet. And, and uh, poor Mr. Uh, Sosha lost that opportunity this year, but we look forward to 2013. We still have a lot of work to do, and working together, we can achieve that. But it's going to take, in our county of Los Angeles, to really achieve the transportation systems that we need. We ought to be looking at building uh, rail above our freeways where we already have the right-of-ways. We had an initiative a few years ago to put a monorail system along our 101. Uh, that was defeated by the city of Los Angeles, even though we had over 50% of the people voting for it on a on a referendum that was on the ballot. Approximately 60 people, I think, voted for it. But if we use our existing right-of-ways, you're going to save a lot of money, and you're going to put a lot of lawyers out of work who use a lot of transit money fighting eminent domain issues. And I'd rather put our limited dollars into serving transportation needs than in serving a lot of our lawyers' college uh, expenses for their children. I think that's very important. But anyway, thank you for the opportunity. I encourage you to visit the Huntington uh, Museum. It's, it's located in San Marino, and along with our other venues, Universal City has a, a great uh, opportunity of entertainment for you. But you're in a great area, and welcome to Los Angeles County, and we hope this will not be your last visit. So thank you very much. Thank you.